1970 Corvette. What else? Nineteen seventy was a big year for muscle cars and for Corvettes. And although the exterior styling didn't really change from nineteen sixty nine, for nineteen seventy the Corvette got the biggest engine it would ever have. Chevrolet ran an ad for the nineteen seventy Corvette that had a very simple headline. It read, Seventy Corvette, what else? And although the seventy Corvette was not radically different from the sixty nine model, Chevrolet stressed that it didn't need to change much to be a standout in the sea of 1970 cars. It still featured the striking third generation Corvette styling, and ours is wearing paint code 976 Bridge Hampton Blue, which makes the reflections stand out even more. Chevrolet maintained that the Corvette buyer is someone who enjoys the drive and appreciates a car that holds the road with a firm chassis. They admitted that it's not a hardcore sports car, claiming that there are far too many nice things about it to be a genuine sports car. But they also assured that it was not a purely luxury car as it was built to perform. Nineteen seventy was the first time that a Corvette buyer could open the hood on their new car and see the numbers 454 on the air cleaner. Previously, the biggest engine was a 427, but for 70, they brought out the 454, and this one was rated at 390 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. For 1970, Chevrolet added a little something to the performance portion of the Corvette, or should we say, a big something, in the form of the new 454 cubic inch V8 engine. And although this was the biggest power plant ever stuffed in a Corvette, the progression of power is a bit unusual. You see, the previous year's 427 could be had with 435 horsepower in the regular production Corvette, and racers could get the limited run L88 427, making far more horsepower. The 1970 Corvette was supposed to have bumped the regular power levels up with the new Code LS7 turbojet 454 coming in at 460 horsepower, but that never materialized. In fact, the LS6 454, the one that made 450 horsepower in the Chevelle, was also not available in the Corvette until 1971, leaving the 390 horsepower version we see here as the top dog big block in the Corvette for 1970. Now that's certainly not a bad thing, as 390 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque in a lightweight fiberglass body, two seat, four speed roadster is still a heck of a ride, especially with the four speed manual Muncie transmission. This car was built in the second week of March 1970 and was equipped with a range of options that made it a very attractive car. The list includes power windows, power steering, power brakes, even an AM FM stereo radio with a cool display that flips when you change the band from AM to FM. A bright red fastened seatbelt indicator light was enough to annoy the driver into wearing the seatbelt, unless, of course, you push the button to turn it off. You wouldn't find that in a car made today. These cars are like driving a surfboard. The nose sticks way out in front of you and comes to a point, and the driver sits just ahead of the rear axle center line so the driver vantage point is different from other cars. It almost feels like the car pivots rather than turns around the corners. But taking corners is one thing these C3 Corvettes did very well, even with the heavy big block V8 tipping the balance forward a bit. At least six American astronauts drove Corvettes at one point or another, and those guys actually ponied up the cash to buy one of these cars. Imagine guys who flew rockets for a living thought that these were cool enough to actually buy one. They weren't gifts from Chevrolet like most people thought. And if you like these cars, we've got a lot of them from the Brothers Collection on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. So I will see you next time 
maybe in another Corvette on Muscle Car of the Week.